Hi there traders, this is Brad Gilbert with the Market Insight for the 28th of May. All right, coming into Mondays, it's a good idea to get your, uh, obviously your technical levels tuned up, but then have a good look through the, uh, the week of fundamentals coming out so you can start to sort of plan where the potential big trading opportunities are going to be, and then also have a look at what, uh, what's been happening over the weekend. Now, there's a few geopolitical events, uh, three really good ones that I can see, and we'll, we'll, we'll cover through those as we go. But first and foremost, have a look at your technical levels. Um, just, and when, when you start doing your technicals, just focus on what, you know, what's been happening, where is it, and that's it. Then we'll come on to work out what's been moving them. So the Aussie just sort of trading sideways, you know, a bit of a tweak to the top side and downside there. Uh, Kiwi had a, a few cracks at the top side, just never could get the ball rolling. Dolly N, slightly higher from where it was uh, from uh, Thursday, Friday lows, but still within that current range, just sort of trading sideways. Euro continue to, to drift lower. And that once again, there's some geopolitical situations building on the Euro. Uh, sterling, we did have that correction in the uh, retail sales, so a top out around 134.20. But generally, now we're starting to see Brexit come into play, and it does seem to be very happy moving lower. Uh, dollar CAD, now it's closed the week higher. This is one of the key ones that I'll be focusing on in a second. Oil, Back at 67.30, now it's off uh, a good over $5 from uh, last week. And that's uh, got a lot to do with Saudi Arabia and Russia talking about raising their oil production levels. So we may see uh, dollar CAD continue to the top side. But when you get, once you've got your, um, your uh, levels done, the main thing to do now is, is just come back to your technicals. And there's not a lot to do here. This is something you're doing most days, is just adjusting your technical levels to the current market, uh, where the current market's been. Aussie, we're just raising the, the uh, trend resistance and, and lowering the support. Uh, Kiwi, once again, just bringing those levels back into play. Now you look at the other major currencies, um, dollar yen, there's nothing to do, euro, nothing to do, uh, sterling, nothing to do. With uh, dollar CAD, we've got that move to the top side. Now I know it's a little bit tricky there, hard to see sometimes with the way I've got oil overlaid there. But uh, if I come across here, now what, another good thing, smart thing to do is, is get rid of the trend lines that don't matter anymore. Okay, so we've broken through this top side here. We've broken through the next level there. Um, you can see it's, it's just had enough uh, power or momentum to tweak above. So I'm gonna just raise that uh, level to the top side there, just to make sure that's in the right spot. Yep. Okay, so dollar CAD, we've got that uh, really ri well, firmly rising support trend line, and we've got a bit of a level here. You can see it's uh, one, two, or two or three touches at the top here, 129.87. I'd say 130, the figure's gonna be a big level, and we'll come back into um, where that is. Okay, so we've got our technical levels all set up here. As I said, there was not a lot to do. There wasn't any sort of major moves on Friday, and this is where you piece together what's moving the currencies around. It's very important you identify what is actually responsible for moving the currencies. Now, they haven't moved a lot. Now, if you come over here once again to the, um, the various uh, news ch channels here, or pages, okay, dollar ends the week stronger as commodity link peers slip. Well, that's more to do with just uh, oil, okay? So oil, okay, if you piece it down to the news on the commodities, uh, OPEC, Russia prepared to raise oil output. Now, and that's Saudi Arabia as well. So that's a good thing. So that's gonna push oil down, dollar CAD higher. One of the other key events, obviously, that the market, the global markets have been focusing on and has been responsible for dollar yen going lower is uh, Donald Trump. Now, Trump's games, I mean, everyone's starting to be able to read Trump a lot clearer. He comes out uh, super aggressive, calling everyone names and what the worst possible scenario will be, pushes them into a corner, and then comes back out and starts saying, oh, it's going to be amazing. We're going to, we're going to have a great relationship. This is the way the guy does business. So I, I could think we might see dollar yen or the yen safe haven trade sort of drift off. But we will need to see a bit more confirmation from North Korea around the possible uh, summit. I think it's June 12th in Singapore. They've sort of labelled that. So that's something to keep an eye on as we uh, go through the sessions there. Also... Once again, once this is, and this is one of the key things. Once the currencies start to drift a bit, the media outlets, um, and I think 
Reuters are pretty pretty good. They're usually pretty neutral, but you can find the mainstream media, like the TV and all these sorts of things, CNBC for that matter, um, will start to focus on the negative impacts of um, geopolitical events. So we've got Brexit. Uh, one of the key things, obviously now, it's been very quiet of late. There's been so many other things going on. Um, and there's one other thing which isn't really on the page at the moment. That's to do with uh, Russia, I mean, not Russia, Italy and Spain. So if I just come back in here, probably drill into this um, news item here. With, when you start to look at, you just try to look for where, where things are going and why things are moving the way they are. Now, Euro as well, we know it's been sort of drifting on, on its uh, downtrend for some time. You're looking at uh, what's happening here. Now, there's a bit of a build-up here on, uh, in Spain. They're trying to make a shift in the uh, political side of things there. And that goes in line with Italy. Now, they know if they can get two, two or three of these nations, European nations who are struggling, uh, especially politically, uh, then it, it builds the story, right? And that's, it's all going to be negative for Euros. So just coming back to um, the major currency pairs, I mean, this is where you, you really need to sort of spend some time piecing everything together. Okay, let me just come back in, change the thing there. Um, and that's where you start to look at the majors and you think, well, okay, what's going on with the uh, majors here? Well, okay, so Aussie just trading sideways, Kiwi sideways, they're just sort of moving around with the dollar and their own individual economic numbers, which have been pretty neutral. Dollar yen is obviously caught up in this uh, North Korean summit, has the potential to go up or down. So we need to keep an eye on, on, on the news for that one. Uh, Euro, the data has been coming in weeks, some of the German data. Now that Italian, Spanish political rumblings can only add weight to uh, Euro coming lower. So I'm, I'm still looking to sell Euro patiently at the level back towards um, that resistance trend line. Now, Sterling's a little bit more awkward. We are seeing some of the economic numbers from last month turn around significantly. So it looks like last month's data may have just been a blemish uh, or incorrect. So that's been corrected. But what we are seeing is Brexit now starting to come into play here as well. Um, and that's, you know, a bit, bit of a wobbly boot on the British economy. Brexit, it just doesn't taste well. So that's continu continuing to go lower. And then you look at uh, oil or dollar CAD. Uh, you can see that um, green, those green bars, I've got oil inverted there. As it drops, it's going to put further upward pressure on dollar CAD. Right, so that's something you need to watch there as well. Uh, the easiest thing to do, without even looking at the news, you can actually just keep an eye on the oil price. And if that does continue to fall, well, dollar CAD will go higher. And we, we do have a, a good technical level there. So that's going to be a very good opportunity, probably early in the week as well, to get things rolling. Now, let's just start coming back to... Um, let me just change the screen here for a second. Now, what I want to do is just have a look. This is where our daily snapshot should really come back into play. And you, you, what you're trying to do at this point, right, you've seen the technical levels, you see, you've, you've looked at the news, and you know why the currencies are moving where they are or why they aren't doing anything. And then you can come back to something like the daily analysis snapshot and really sort of put everything together. Now, if you have a look fundamentally and drill down here, there's not a lot fundamentally going on. And this is where trading is easier, okay? If we've got clear fundamentals, and particularly on the US dollar, then it's an easy trading situation. Now, I've still got the Fed with an with a upward bias from the Fed, right? They, but they have taken off a little bit of the steam by saying, if inflation gets above 2%, they're not gonna be in a rush to raise rates. So that's a little bit, they've still got an upward projection, but it's a little bit softer. And that's why I don't have uh, the fundamental outlook for the US dollar as a strong upward fundamental at this stage. But technically, it's, it's still going up. So technically, we are looking to buy. Then you look across the rest of the major pairs, right? And none of them really have any major fundamental direction from their central banks. And the economic data has been coming in a bit mixed. So fundamentally, what are the currencies doing? Well, they're not doing much fundamentally. They're doing what the US dollar is, is directing and those geopolitical events. But all the trading activity at this point is technical. Right now, you've got euro. Yes, it's drifting lower. Continuing to trade lower. So is sterling. Sterling, I think, is a little bit trickier than euro. And then you come down here through the Aussie, Kiwi, dollar CAD, dollar yen, and dollar Swiss. These currencies are pretty much just drifting sideways with a bit of a mixed uh, bias here. Like dollar yen, 
long sort of medium term daily down, short term up. Uh, dollar Swiss, which was really tracking high with the dollar, he's starting to stall, trade sideways. If anything, drifting lower on the dailies. Uh, and Aussie and Kiwi not really doing a hell of a lot there either. So when it does come back to what is moving and where can we identify direction, well, it really comes back to the US dollar. Technically, it is still going up and looking quite strong. So to me, where are the opportunities at this stage? Well, to me, I've got to be looking to sell euro and sterling and I've got to be looking to buy dollars. And that's the trades that I'm looking for at the moment. Now, a number of these other trades, in particular dollar yen, uh, are being sort of, or dollar cat, I guess for that matter as well, are being controlled or overshadowed by geopolitical events. And that's pretty much why they're on, on sort of weight, but they are two sleeping giants that could really come into play this week, dollar cad and dollar yen. And when you're talking dollar yen, that means all the yen crosses. And they are starting to, to build up some uh, really nice shape at this stage. All right, now, so that's how we, where we are technically, what's moving the currencies and the sort of daily analysis snapshot. What we want to do now is, is actually start to prepare yourself for where the best trading opportunities may come from, right? And this is all following, if you have a look at the, um, uh, the sort of daily routine here, this is what I'm actually doing each day is actually going through this routine. And upcoming events is, is the next sort of key thing you need to be looking for. And the way we've shaped this on uh, the Market Insight page is to make it easier for you, right? To me, okay, the next major event uh, is the consumer confidence out of the US. Now, this is on Tuesday. There's no major economic numbers coming out on Monday. And with those geopolitical events, it's a little bit of a, you know, it looks like it might be a good opportunity, but it's not, right? Mondays suck in general. Right, because we lose the momentum from the previous uh, week, trading week. Now we've got geopolitical events, Brexit, uh, the Italian-Spanish situation for the Euro. We've got oil, uh, the Saudis and uh, Russia talking about raising production. Then we've got the North Korean summit with dollar yen. So there's so many geopolitical events. It's safer. Let the currencies find their feet for the start of the week. And then you can really piece it together and say, well, okay, now we know what they're doing. What's really important for us? So when you, when you come back to looking at these two uh, components, if I just get my pen up, okay, sort of item three and item four of your analysis, what you're trying to do is you're trying to look at the daily analysis snapshot, identify which pairs have a, like a good direction for yourself, and then you look at the upcoming events and go, well, which ones out of these uh, events could really give those technical um, directions, a, a real good push in the same direction. Obviously, the US numbers, uh, we we're talking there before about uh, the UK, there's not a lot of UK data coming out early on. Um, so we don't have much of a connection, but the US dollar obviously will impact most majors and Euro sterling in particular. And then you've come back, back down through the list and then you can start to really piece it together. This is where your momentum may shift very quickly. Um, the Bank of Canada, obviously, now that oil is starting to move around a lot and actually just drop five dollars, that will the Bank of Canada interest rate decision no no change in rates expected, but the statement will come into play. Um, the fact that NAFTA is still hanging over the, the Canadian sort of economy is another thing for the Bank of Canada to wait. But uh, we may see some further activity, especially if oil keeps moving lower. And then as we come back down through the uh, the rest of the week. Um, we do have, okay, some a lot more activity. We, obviously, there's a fair bit on the Aussie, uh, the Chinese, CapEx and those sorts of things. And then you come back down. Um, then we start to get into the UK manufacturing. Obviously, the non-farm payrolls on Friday, the, the absolute major event. So with these geopolitical political events on Monday, I don't expect a lot of activity first thing Monday. Uh, the consumer confidence numbers on Tuesday may come into play. And then as we go through the week, uh, once we get into Wednesday, Thursday, the market will be talking very closely about uh, US non-farm payrolls, but we do have the prelim GDP numbers, Bank of Canada and the Canadian GDP numbers in between and the UK manufacturing. So there's plenty to, plenty to put together. Your job as a, uh, as a trader is to really be patient and wait for the best trading opportunities, right? So don't, uh, don't get all overexcited and think, okay, let's, let's get started on Monday because today is not the best trading day. All right, so all, I, all, all we need you to do is 
work out where these currencies are going. And then once we've, once we've done that, then we can work out where our key levels are, if there's any of these uh, are, gonna, are, are seriously good trading opportunities or if they aren't. To me, straight off the bat, Euro is still the best uh, trending currency because it's nice and clean. Where you look at sterling, I know sterling has come a long way, but you're getting massive violent moves all over the place on sterling. It's, it's because of that Brexit, because of the, the really uh, wild data. So sterling, yeah, to me it's going down, but it's a, it's a bit more aggressive. Dollar CAD could be the next real big trending pair. And I think if oil heads back towards 40 bucks, well, this thing is, is definitely going to head up towards 133. And that, that may be the nicest trade. And I'll be looking very closely at Dollar CAD for the next best trade, even going to probably Tuesday. Uh, and also dollar yen, um, sort of a bit of sideways at the moment, but if there's positive news out of North Korea this summit, then we may see that heading back towards, you know, up towards 111 or even higher above these uh, previous highs. And that's pretty much it, guys. There's not a hell of a lot to do except uh, tune up your charts. And as you saw me doing there earlier, it's going to take you about three or four minutes. Um, just isolate the best opportunities that you can see yourself with regards, um, you know, your trading, what, what pairs, what time frames uh, are going to fit in with your schedule. Don't bend your lifestyle out of shape to fit in with these releases. They're going to fit in with what you're doing. All right. Anyway, have a good week, guys. We've got plenty of opportunities. There's, uh, there's no rush to jump in today, as I, as I mentioned. And uh, just let the, let the currencies form, rebuild, give you some shape after the weekend. Let these geopolitical events sit, settle. And then we'll start to sort of piece the, uh, you know, the direction and the technical levels together to find those next best trades. All right, have a good week, everyone. We'll see you in the trade zone. Cheerio.